Hey everyone, since a few different iOS emulation apps have come out, I just wanted to talk about my experience with every one I've used so far. So the first one I'm going to start with is obviously Delta. Delta has been fantastic for me. I love how user friendly, especially for like new people, how great this UI is. It's really easy to navigate and it's just easy to find what you're looking for, especially with like the box art images and everything like that. And even though the settings are limited, it's still easy to find whatever you're looking for. So I definitely recommend this app for anyone who's interested in the systems that this app supports. I also love that I can back up my saves to either Google Drive or Dropbox. And another reason why I can love that is so I can transfer it to other devices should I choose to emulate on a new handheld. So I really don't have anything negative to say about Delta. Of course, I wish that it supported more systems than what we currently have, but I would rather have a pretty much flawless app that's limited than an app that has a lot of issues with a whole bunch of options. But other than that, I don't really have anything else to say, and I'm just going to move on to the next app. Next up, we have Gamma, and this is after I've had a few updates. So with Gamma, the biggest issue is obviously that they have in-app ads, and there's no way to get rid of them. I understand the developer probably wants to be paid for all the amount of work they put into the app. However, I'd rather just pay like a dollar for the app than have ads in it. Ads are really just ruining the experience with it. It also had a really rough launch because it wasn't working right away. We had to wait until the first update came out to actually start playing some games. And I understand that not everything's going to work perfectly, but I wish he had done more testing before putting out the app. Now when playing actual games, I haven't had too many issues other than the ads popping up. Because of that, I can't really use this app and I'm going to delete it and use RetroArch instead. Next up we have RetroArch. So with RetroArch, my only issue is that the UI is very confusing to use. Of course, you can always look up a guide on how to actually use it, but I feel like for people who are just starting off with emulation, this can be very overwhelming. But once I actually looked up how to use it and guides and everything I needed. It is pretty easy and straightforward to use if you're not really into editing all the different settings and getting the best possible performance that you can get. And one of the things I've noticed with my limited time and content creation is the majority of gamers don't really like setting up and going through settings and optimizing. They rather just have something download and work or, or start working right away out of the box. Or in this case of these apps, they just want to download it, add their games, and start playing. They don't want to have to configure settings or anything like that. Now obviously RetroArch also supports PS1 like Gamma, so I've been using this instead of Gamma, and I've had much better experience because I don't have intrusive ads popping up in my games or between games. Another thing I like about RetroArch in general is that you can choose what core you want to use in order to play certain systems, so it's nice to have options in case some games require a different emulator in order to have better performance. I'm disappointed though that the iOS version of RetroArch is very limited when compared to Android, but I completely understand that is not the developer's fault at all. This is 100% on Apple and, their, and them not allowing the use of GIT. So overall, I've had a good experience with RetroArch and there's not much else to say that isn't already been said before many times since this has actually been around for a while and it's just new to iOS specifically. Now next up we have PPSSPP and I've had a great time using this app so far. Now I never had a PSP growing up so I'm still new to what games I should be playing and things like that but overall it's very easy to set up. You don't have to configure a whole bunch of settings however you do have the option to which is nice so that way so that way for people who aren't interested in tweaking with their settings they don't have to really get into that but the people who do love doing things like that have the option to do so so I think that's really nice. And if you go to the app store, you'll notice there's another version of the app, which is the gold version. From what I understand, there's no difference between the two apps other than the gold version is a direct way to support the developer. So it's really cool that they gave us the option to download the app for free or to directly support them because, you know, you never know anybody's situation. And it's just nice to have the option rather than being forced to watch ads unlike some other apps. So if you want to support the developer, that's a way you can do it. And for the few games I have been playing on here, I haven't really had any issues. Saving works well. The only issue I've been experiencing is that my game library like keeps disappearing and I have to go and open it in the folder and bring it back to the app every single time. I don't know if there's a setting I'm supposed to turn on to fix that or if that's just a known bug or if that's a feature. I'm not really 100% sure, but that's the only issue I've had with the app. But if that's the only issue I'm having it's really not that bad it's just a little bit inconvenient so I'm not mad or anything just sharing my experience
Now, the next app I'm going to cover is Replay Game Emulator. Now, this one is for all DS, and the only reason why I'm covering it is I guess it's the only app that's available on the App Store in Europe, even though I'm not European. I'll just talk about it briefly. So since I have access to Delta, I'm not really going to use this app, but it does work. It's very simple. One thing I don't like about it is there doesn't seem a way to get the box art for your games on here. And if you go to settings, there's really no settings other than turning on and off vibration. So it's kind of weird that there are no settings to use so far. Maybe that'll change in the future, but as of right now, there isn't. Other than that, adding games is very simple and the UI is still very clean, similar to Delta. So I do recommend this app if it's your only option. But other than that, I prefer Delta 100% more, but again, does work. So there's that. I don't really have much else to say other than it's working, clean UI, and a good option. And finally, the last app we have today will be Folium. Now this app is gonna cost $5 and there's no way of getting around that. And similar to the other apps that came out, it had a very rough launch and it wasn't usable for me during the first few days, but a new update just came out and it seems to be working a lot better. The very first important thing I had to do in order to get it to run better was go settings and then go to renderer shaders and you have to this use shader GIT just in time will be on. You have to make sure that's off. You can just click. And of course you have to import your own files in order to get everything to work as well. But once you have that all set up, then I started having much better performance from the app. Like before this part would be stuttering and having audio issues, but now it seems to work way better. And again, like at this part of the game, it would be stuttering or have no audio at all, but now it seems to be working just fine, which is great for me. A little bit of stuttering, but that's okay. Now, one issue I've been having is any game that requires the me, I get this error of it can't load the me. From what I understand, there's like a certain file or information you have to import from your 3DS in order to get it to work. Um, I haven't done that yet, and I'm not really sure how to, so I'll have to look up a guide. I'll have to look up a guide on how to do that. But in the meantime, it's not working and you have to really configure it to get it to work. So at the moment, I will not be able to play any Mii games. But of course, I guess you can go and fix that yourself. I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro. To me, that's still one of the newer models. But from what I understand in the tech world, that's basically as old as the pyramid. So maybe that's why I'm having some issues. I need the newest model. I don't know. That's how Folium runs on my device so far. Maybe in some future updates, we'll be the developers will be able to make it tweak it and make it have better performance than older devices. But again, obviously they have to have enough power regardless of how much tweaking you do. So who knows, but it's doable because you have to pay for it. I don't necessarily recommend it if you have an older device, but that's all I have for Folium. I feel like it's not as bad as people say, but again, it does deserve the criticism if it is going to be a paid for app. And that's pretty much all I have for today on the app for every iOS emulation app. I think there are a few more apps I didn't talk about, but they all, at the end of the day, pretty much do the same thing. So I'm not gonna go through every single one, but that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.